Good morning everybody, this is dear Mama Sal on a beautiful uh, Wednesday morning, I think it's Wednesday. <laughs> there are some clouds but they're high up, long way up, no way I could touch them. It's 17 degrees already here in southern British Columbia which would make it 62 already in um, the States. So it's going to be a hot one. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. And luckily I dressed accordingly. But as you know, I also put on a, a top, a, a cardigan type top, um, because if it's hot, that means everybody's going to hit the air conditioner hard at work or the automatic system will and then I'll freeze to death. <sighs> and the reason for that is complicated. It's, it has to do with where I'm positioned in the office, <laughs> which is basically just about right under a air conditioning duct. However, I'm very grateful. One of the things I love about asking the questions about what direction would you like me to take is it reconfirms to me what I'm doing that you guys enjoy. And the reason I say that is because, you know, you can probably imagine this. Every now and then you think, I wonder if I'm doing the right thing here. Not for me or for views or whatever, but for my very loyal audience. And so every now and then I like to check in because there's nothing more important in some ways, and I'm certain you can understand that, than to make sure that I keep doing what um, created Dear Mama Sal. And you know, what a lot of you have already said um, is, of course, that the car vlogs are what created Dear Mama Sal, and no way should I stop doing them, and I wasn't planning to. Because I don't know what I do with my mornings <laughs> if I couldn't talk to <laughs> if I couldn't talk to you guys, it would be like really. I think I'd be talking to myself. <laughs> I just wouldn't have a camera going. <laughs> Can you imagine it? Yeah, it wouldn't look any different at all. Think about that. It just wouldn't look any different at all. <sighs> Scary, huh? <laughs> now I know what some of you are asking, because some of you are wicked, I know that. Some of you are asking in your heads, <laughs> Sal, were you always talking to yourself? <laughs> and Benji just gave you a license to do it <laughs> and, and make some use of it. No, I wasn't always to Well, maybe I was. In my head. Yeah, sorry, Angela, in case you're watching this one, she likes to know what I react to. The oo was um, a blue... Okay, if I said a blue pine, I wonder if you'd know what I'm talking about. There's one particular pine tree that looks almost like a dusty rose, dusty miller, silvery blue color. It's probably called the silvery blue pine, for all I know. Anyway, but it was... Uh, it, it had split. That's what I was reacting to. It was very sad. It was a tree that just split in half uh, lengthwise rather than down the center. It had, it had split. Now, did somebody yank on it until it did? I don't know. You know somebody might have attached it to a Jeep like mine with a big towing package and pulled the heck out of it. I don't know what happened, but it. That's what happened. Anyway, so where was I? Talking to myself, yes. That's where I was. 
So a, a lot of good, a good input already, and I hope that I get more um, as different regular viewers come in. But the other thing that I heard loudly was a lot of you really like the word of the day. It sort of gave you something to hang your hat on for the day. And that made me ask myself, why did I stop doing that? And I think in a way I didn't. I've always tried to find um, a sort of word to... Well, that's not true that I've always done it. Well, anyway, whatever. So, Anne wrote to me. And she used a word that I haven't heard for a long time. And I thought, what a great word for the word for the day. Chipper. Anne asked me, how do I always sound so chipper in the mornings? Because she wakes up grumpy. Well, Anne, don't tell anybody. Because this is strictly between us. And so do I. I am not a morning person. I know you're shaking your head and saying that's not true. But Anne, I'm not a morning person. I'm not sure if I'm even an evening person these days. But I definitely never have been a morning person. So I do not jump out of bed full of the joys of spring. Got it? What I do is I wake up the same as a lot of people muttering about my alarm clock and how could that possibly be ringing so soon because I've only just closed my eyes Can any of you relate to that and by the way Anne just so that you know <laughs> you're not going to believe this either um, I have three different alarms going. And I know some of you are going to roll your eyes at this. And I snooze three different alarms. So basically, <laughs> I normally wake up, well, it's just as well actually because, you know, I normally need a quick visit to the washroom around about six o'clock in the morning. Um, but you know, that's too early to get up. And then my alarm system starts working at about seven o'clock in the morning. And it's really a battle of wills. My alarm clock actually is my cell phone. And I have just set you know, these different alarms in my cell phone. And what I do <laughs> is I keep snoozing at three alarms. Normally for 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how grumpy I am. I'm going to use the word that Anne used because it makes it much more effective. So Anne, I want you to see this vision of me punching the snooze on my cell phone. Now, I've got it down to a very fine art, Anne, because I have my cell phone on quite a long um, extension thing, you know what I mean? And so I can actually lie it right beside me so I don't have to turn over even to punch the alarm. I can just lean over and go, shut up. <laughs> so, Anne, I want you to see this vision. And the vision is not one of happiness. I then eventually pull my sorry ass out of bed. <laughs> and as I said, normally that's around about I'd say on average about 7.30. Now the next thing I do is I go and make my lunch to take to work. And I do that while I'm still half asleep. Now, I know a lot of you are very organized and do it the night before. But it's part of my waking up process. Part of my waking up process is to make breakfast. 
So, but Anne, while I'm making breakfast, here's what I'm doing. I'm busy talking to myself in my head. <laughs> and I'm watching the clock. I, I make breakfast against the clock. Do any of you relate to that? I know if it is this time, I should have got this far in making, not breakfast, making the food for work. And so all the time I'm sort of going against time, which actually helps wake me up for some reason. And I make one cup of coffee to take to work, because the coffee at work doesn't taste as good, and then I have I use, I use uh, the K-cups, and I use the same K-cup, and I make another weaker cup to drink while I'm putting on my makeup. Now, that doesn't make any sense, because you'd think, so. you want the strong cup. You want the strong cup to wake up, and I don't, really. I just need the taste of coffee. So I make a weaker cup that I drink while I am um, putting my makeup on. And you know, it's funny because I always used to make two different cups of coffee. And then one day I forgot that I hadn't put a new pot in and I made it and I went, you know something, it tastes just fine. So, at this point, Anne, I am now slightly less grumpy. And then, Anne, I start getting dressed. Now, if I've been a good girl the night before, I do what I organize people do, which is I have pulled out my clothes for today, the night before. I'm trying to teach myself to do that. I think at 67, it's time to learn that one. What do you think? It takes discipline. And by the way, I need to report to all of you who are neat freaks that this is now day four of have a tidy bedroom and my bedroom is still tidy there is nothing on my bed other than my clickers and there's nothing on the floor other than a carpet rug thing and the cubies that are holding the stuff that I need to sort this weekend so I'm very proud of myself. That's four days. If I can keep this going for 21, it might become a habit. And the only thing that will make my bedroom untidy again is my laziness and lack of discipline. I know that. The only thing that will cause me to start smoking again is a lack of self-respect. Okay. All right, now that little Richard, shorten the name Richard and you'll understand what I'm talking about. That guy was on my right hand side and just cut straight across me and into the left hand lane to turn left. Seriously? And that doesn't make me very chipper. It makes me want to raise a digit. I am really, I just like, how could you do that? So the next thing I do, Anne, is I put on my makeup. And as I think a lot of you know, I'm a big news freak, so all the time I'm listening to the news. And I think listening to the news for me is part of my wake up process as well. There is a woman behind me putting on her makeup in her BMW. I don't know what makes me more angry. Ah. Okay, let me not get upset. She's just put on all her powder and she was busy contouring. Ah, now she's putting on lipstick. Anyway, um, so, and as I was saying, that I actually, now thanks to the wonderful broadcast that the viewers did with me to teach me how to contour or how to put on my foundation and everything. Um, I actually enjoy putting my makeup on now. 
So a big thanks to everybody who was there on that particular broadcast. Yeah. Ah, she's busy checking her watch. So, I actually now enjoy putting my makeup on. And I don't mind saying, Anne, and I know this sounds pretty weird, but I can't put my makeup on without thinking about that broadcast, which always makes me laugh. Because it was a very funny broadcast while they were trying to teach this neophyte how to put on contouring makeup. So that gives me a smile every morning. <laughs> and then, of course, then I, I get my makeup on and, and I look at myself and I realize how stunningly beautiful I am. And that always makes me smile. But here's the trick, Anne, and I want you to really get this. It reminds me of the days when I was a performer. And I, as you may know, I used to be a professional speaker. And one of the things that I learned when I was doing that for so many years is that you actually need a routine to get your adrenaline pumping and to um, get the right mentality going. Because they don't care if you wake up grumpy or sick or whatever. They're paying a very large amount of money to have you speak. Make sense? So Anne, when I put on my makeup in the morning, to me it is like my routine to start performance. So obviously is a major problem ahead of me. It's taken me about a while to work that out. I think I might take a back cut. Because definitely the traffic's looking very weird. Anyway, so I think, Anne, that one of the things that really is um, in my mind is that I'm getting ready for the performance. And the performance is vlogging. So big thank you to all of you who are fans and loyal fans because you help make my mornings chipper. I'm not sure I'd be quite as chipper. If I were not doing the vlogs. Think about that one. So how does this relate to your life, Anne? And anybody else who has said, gosh, I wish I could be as positive as she is first thing in the morning. By the way, don't call me she, I have a name. Um, <laughs> I always say that to people. So, let's have a little think about some of the ways that this translates into your life. Number one, I don't think many people wake up in the morning feeling chipper. I don't think many people wake up all gung-ho, hello, thank goodness it's seven o'clock in the morning or whatever time you get up. I don't think people do that. I think normal people get up going, oh gosh, is it seven? I believe that self-talk is a major part of your mental health. Cognitive therapy, if you like. Now, cognitive therapy is when you take a negative thought and you replace it with a positive one. And you can do that for yourself. You don't need some analyst to do it for you. You can do it for yourself. I can choose whether to let the little so-and-so that just cut me off ruin my day. Because you understand, I could have escalated that a long way. 
how many stupid drivers there are, which by the way there are, um, how many stupid drivers there are um, on the road, um, or thoughtless, or dangerous, I mean like the woman putting on her makeup, uh, mind you she probably thinks I'm pretty dangerous too because I'm talking to myself, think about that one. All right, so one of the things is, do you talk to yourself in the morning? And I would think most people do. And what is it you're feeding yourself? Are you feeding yourself bad thoughts or good thoughts? Now, if you're listening to Dear Mama Sal in the morning, the chances are you get a bit, <laughs> you get a mixture of humor and incredible wisdom. Yes. Um, so that's, I'm really delighted that so many of you do that. And I couldn't understand why any of you do listen to me in the morning, but I would have thought it would have sent you to sleep. But yes, you're right. Maybe you listen to me because I'm chipper. Ah, cute little pink um, children's chalkboard. You know, part of me wants to have that. So, I think it is your responsibility to make yourself chipper in the morning, Anne. And now you have no excuses. As a friend of mine once said to me, Sal, there's part of me that hates you because ignorance was bliss. In other words, before she met me, she could have all these excuses, but now <laughs> she knew better. Therefore, she couldn't blame the idiot that just cut me off. Um, you know, she realized it was her job to get herself back into shape again. <laughs> And, you know, that really is. I'm grateful. That cheers me up every day. Aren't you grateful for things? I'm grateful for the fact that I actually have a cell phone that works and wakes me up. Because I probably would still be asleep by lunchtime. I'm grateful for the fact that I have a faucet I can turn on and get clean water. Because there are an awful lot of people in the world that don't. I'm grateful for the fact that I have a waterfall basin in my wash. Always wanted one of those. Um, and I gave myself one because I'm special. I'm grateful for the fact that I have these incredible people in my life who actually care whether I put up a vlog or not. I was talking to Benji last night. He and I chat every now and then. And we were having a lovely chat. And I said, how excited I am becoming, obviously, about going to VidCon. But I also said to him, you know something, Benji? It's really strange. I worked so hard to get to quarter of a million views. When I say I worked so hard, but you know what I mean, it's like it started a couple of days a week and then I, you know, I basically now <laughs> do Dear Mama Sal six days a week and normally seven, to be honest. I just do other things for Dear Mama Sal on the Saturday. So for two years, I, I really worked so hard to learn everything and learn how to do stuff and to get to quarter of a million views. I can remember it, how incredibly amazing that was. And the wonderful kindness of Leah, who put together a, an incredible video, which if any of you haven't seen it, it's sitting on the special videos uh, page on the blog site at dearmamasal.com. And she put together this incredible congratulatory vlog for me where she contacted a lot of the regular viewers and they all sent me good wishes well I want to tell you something it was amazing and I cried my heart out and then the little so-and-sos knew I would cry seriously and they knew I would cry and so they only showed it when I was doing a live broadcast and then they sent it to me after that and of course, I broke down completely. Which is what they knew I would do.
and even thinking about that's making me cry. <laughs> so I looked at it and I went, you know, Benj, the incredible thing is it took two years to get to a quarter of a million. And then it's taken another year to get to 400,000. Well, the year's not up yet. Who knows? The question is, can we make it to half a million? Oh, half a million, can you imagine? Half a million by our third anniversary. I don't know. Maybe with VidCon and Vlog Affair, maybe we can. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. But you know what's really amazing? Is that by early next year, I would think by spring, we could be at a million views. Now, and that makes me pretty chipper. Because <laughs> it's like, can you imagine what this feels like? With three years ago, Benji just set me up pressed the buttons and said, okay, Sal, there you go. You're now a YouTuber. And I <laughs> looked at him and I went, and now? He said, you'll work it out. And left. And then last night we were talking again about and Anne, listen to this. What has it done to my mentality? Can you understand that Part of doing Dear Mama Sal is what's keeping me chipper. Because I'm achieving things. I stopped smoking because of Dear Mama Sal, and that makes me pretty chipper. After a lifetime of trying every way I possibly could to quit, I'm starting to get organized in my home because of dear Mama Sal. Well, that's not true, is it? I'm doing it because I want to. But I'm literally trying to convince myself to swallow my ego and show you, you know, I know you want before and after pictures and I'm scared. Because some of those before pictures horrify even me. 